<clears throat> All right, so let's look at this problem. Uh, so uh, we've got a crank OA that is rotating with an angular velocity of 12 radians per second. <clears throat> and we want to find the velocity of piston B. This is a, a common um, type of problem where you have something that's rotating <clears throat> and the piston is moving up and down. <clears throat> And so we're, we're in the relative velocity, you know, method, the section. Um, and so bar AB, you know, that's not in pure rotation. It's not in pure translation. So bar AB, kind of the heart of our problem, is, you know, let's use the relative velocity method on bar AB <coughs> to find the velocity of B, something like VB equals VA plus VB slash A. And immediately we write this, we know this is omega cross r, b slash a, b a. <coughs> right, but before we get to that, uh, we, can, we can go ahead and find the velocity of a by looking at bar o a. So I kind of like to remind myself, okay, what am I looking at? I'm only looking at bar OA, so I'll do the angular velocity of bar OA, only look at bar OA. <clears throat> I'm forgetting that it's attached uh, to AB. And bar OA is in pure rotation. And so I could find the velocity of A <clears throat> is R omega. I like to do R omega, and then I'll add the direction myself. I'll visualize the direction myself. I'll, I'll tell you what direction this is uh, myself. This is an easy one. Uh, so... R is 0.3 if I'm, I want to know velocity of point A by looking at bar OA, and it's going at 12 radians per second, so 3.6 meters per second. Now this is an easy one. It's at the very top here. Again, not it does not matter how it was connected to AB. I'm only looking at OA. <coughs> the velocity of A, uh, we're in luck. It's all right there in the negative I direction. And so that, so now I can go here to velocity of, the relative velocity uh, for bar AB. So bar AB now. All right, so I'll plug that in. Um, I, I don't know this. Um, <clears throat> I do know this. I do know that. Uh, I don't know VB, but I know its direction. Right? I don't know VB, but I know its direction. It, it's confined to move along this slot. Now, <clears throat> sometimes you kind of visualize what you think if it's going up or down, uh, but you know the, the line of action. Choose up or down. If your answer comes out negative, then you chose the wrong direction. Uh, I'm choosing straight up. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in VB uh, all in the positive J. So I'm doing the relative velocity term. Equals <coughs> VA, which is negative 3.6 in the I, plus omega. Remember, I'm, I'm looking at bar AB. I don't know this one. I do not use 12. That was for bar OA, and this is a different rigid body. So omega AB cross with R. So, so if, I, if I started with BA, B slash A, B slash A, this is from A to B. <clears throat> from A to B. So what is this line? From A to B, uh, 0.6. Uh, let's see, so 0 0.6, t -t 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 the cosine 30 would be in the I. And then down, sorry, down, negative 0.6, sine 30 in the J. <clears throat> There's my equation, and I have two unknowns. And that's fine because it's really two equations, my I equation and my J equation. You go ahead and do this cross product, uh, but I am going to go ahead and kind of skip a step and go ahead and jump to my I and J equation. My I equation, what do I have on the left-hand side right here? Nothing. Uh, negative 3.6, that's in the I. And so then I just ask myself, okay, after I do this cross product, which one of these is going to be in the I direction? So you know the cross product, you know, if you do a K cross an I, you get a J, K cross J, you get an I. <coughs> one of those is negative, sorry. K cross J, I think would be negative. But um, 
So anyway, I, I, I know that this one is going to show up here in my I equation. So go ahead and do the 0 0.6 sine 30 omega AB, and then just ask myself, okay, is that going to be a positive I or a negative I? K cross J is negative I, but <coughs> I've got a negative in front of one of those, uh, so that's why this comes out to be positive. All right, so then I can just, that one equation I can solve, omega AB is 12 radians per second. Why did it came out positive, so it's in the positive K. All right, so this is a special case. It's, it's not usually going to be the same as the rigid body of the other one. Why is it? Uh, maybe this 30 degree angle, this 0.3, this 0.6, and the <coughs> sine of 30 is 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, I mean. Uh, so, but anyway, there it came out 12. It came out positive, so that's the angular velocity. All right, now looking at my J equation, VB. And then which one of these is going to show up in my J equation? This one right here. Uh, and so it'll be 0 0.6 cosine 30 omega AB. And now positive or negative, uh, K cross I is positive J. <clears throat> and so I plug in my... 12 right there and I would get VB 6.24 meters per just meters per second 6.24 meters per second it came out positive and so I guessed up uh, and it is up so let's kind of take a step back and look at this <coughs> I can just use V equals R omega for bar OA but I can't use V equals R omega for bar AB because it's not in pure rotation. Got to use a different method. Got to use a relative velocity method. So use the relative velocity method. I, I plugged in what I found for A for um, point A by looking at bar OA. And then it kind of jumped to bar AB. This is almost like two gears that are touching a little bit. You know, you could find the velocity on the edge of... A bar OA, you know, point A, velocity of point A on the edge of OA, <coughs> and then take that to your next rigid body. So I take that to my next rigid body, bar AB, and find the, um, use the relative uh, velocity method for bar AB. Uh, make sure you can do those cross products of K cross I and K cross J, uh, two equations, two unknowns.